Imagine a world where more women had the time and resources to fully explore their genius. Welcome to She Rebel Radio, a community-driven podcast dedicated to supporting women to unlearn conventional rules and create businesses of significance. This is our International Women's Day series, bringing you insights and advice from noteworthy women entrepreneurs here in the UK who strive to create more meaning, impact and purpose. Our headline partner for this podcast series is NatWest. NatWest have been a pioneer in supporting women in business since the publication of the Rose Review in 2019, which identified the disparity between male and female entrepreneurs when starting a business. NatWest have been implementing key interventions and providing essential wraparound support to realise the unrealised potential of female founders. My name is Lulu Mins. I host retreats and create spaces for entrepreneurial women to explore their genius. And today I'm going to create that same space for you right here on this podcast episode. Welcome to episode 92 of She Rebel Radio, Becoming a Risk Contender. I cannot believe we are in the last trimester of our International Women's Day series where we've dived into when creating our businesses of significance that we can connect with the lesser of whys, that to connect with our wisdom we can do less. What a relief ladies, to connect with our wisdom and that jewel of wisdom that's already inside of us, we can do that by connecting with the vibration of sound, by connecting with the stories of other women and our historical narrative, by connect- connecting with the land. And, you know, just us women gathering and having these conversations enables us to really connect with our wisdom. We've also dived into the currency of compassion and how that can be interweaved and threaded through your business, that how we as women can make kindness and compassion really part of our businesses of significance and we can become leaders within that area of change. And for this last trimester of this series, we're going to be looking at courage and impact. We have got three guests coming up for you, including Kelly Newton, who's going to share with us how she got her mum and her and all her friends in their undercrackers for photographs for her business. We're going to hear from Mary Gregory about how we can have the courage to transcend our ego and lead from a more authentic space. And finally, we're going to hear from Nat West with an update of the Rose Review and how they are untapping the potential of female entrepreneurs. Now, for my favourite topic, one of my favourite topics and a real foundation and building piece of She Rebel Radio is how we as women can break conventional rules, how we can become risk contenders and in the arena of business with our businesses of significance. Now, the Rose Review concluded that women are more risk averse to certain areas of business. So for this episode, we're going to be looking at what is being risk averse? Are women really averse to it? And if so, why are we? And what does being a risk contender look like for us? As a collective of women, we always ask the collective question. And then for you as an individual. Now, there were so many stories that I could share with you as part of this episode. But I love when I'm preparing and researching and really immersed in the creative process of She Rebel Radio, whatever book I may read or something that I may watch or a conversation I may have really feeds into the narrative that I'm creating for you on the podcast, creating that space for you to connect with your genius and ask these questions that we don't have time to give that depth that we were talking about and that integration that comes with wisdom. And I watched the four-part Janet Jackson documentary and I've always liked Janet Jackson, particularly one of her albums, um, I think in the 90s, um, or it might have been um, the very early noughties, before Nipplegate happened. Who remembers Nipplegate in 2004 when Janet Jackson appeared on the Super Bowl with Justin Timberlake. I've always been, uh, well, not so much a secret Justin Timberlake fan. I do love Justin Timberlake. I've seen him twice live. Um, He's amazing. 
But he did issue an apology two years ago where he kind of recognised that as a white male um, in a system of patriarchy and misogyny, that he has got away with certain things throughout his career, that the women he's been associated with have not. And I, you know, I respected him for coming out and saying that because it wasn't something that he would have recognised as a young white male. It wasn't something that us women really recognised back in 2004. You know, we're talking about 18 years ago. I don't know how 2004 was 18 years ago. What were you doing in 2004? There's a good question for us all to consider. I was a trainee lawyer up in London, um, I think completing my, my training contract and my training contract and doing the legal practice course in London at that time. So I was only in my 20s and it wasn't even something because I, I remember Nipplegate happening. And just to kind of go through that story briefly, I didn't realise the impact that that had on Janet Jackson. And that is something that we're going to dive into because it really interweaves with, within, you know, what is being risk averse? And, and if as women we're averse to it, why is that? And she, it was one of the biggest performances of her career. She was really at the height of of her career. It was her performance, not Justin Timberlake's, but he came out, you know, with those collaborations that they do in the Brit Awards here in the UK and for the Super Bowl in America of two, you know, massive artists who kind of combine their music. And right at the end with his song, I'm trying to remember which one it is. My ringtone is Justin Timberlake. That's how sad I am. Um, with um, I'm going to get you naked at the end of this song, there was a wardrobe malfunction and he meant to rip part of her costume off, but not the full part that exposed her boob, her nipple on Super Bowl in front of millions of people. They received thousands upon millions of complaints. There was a half a million pound compensation claim. Janet Jackson was kind of fallen from grace And she's never been invited back on the Super Bowl. And her career took a huge, huge nosedive. I would say so much in terms of watching that documentary. She disappeared after the press were busy talking about it, shredding her to bits. She disappeared and was no longer the massive name that she was and had been, despite the... um, controversy with Michael Jackson and all of those things and and being under his shadow um, as the more famous one in their family. She she disappeared. Until now, she is back, you know, age 53 or 54. She's become a mother at the age of 50. And watching that documentary really, you know, gave me a whole new amplified respect for the things that she'd achieved and the risks that she's taken. And, you know, within a system that isn't designed to support women to do those things at a time, you know, she's been in, she's been in the public eye from a very young age. But why is this relevant? Because Nipplegate really does indicate so much of why women, if we are averse to risk, why that might be. But before we dive into that, let's look at what is being risk averse. You know, risk, um, there's a game, isn't there, risk, again, which is associated with kind of military strategy, um, you know, discipline and, and you know, conflict and conquest. And again, it's, it's quite a masculine male area. So it's interesting us as women are seen as averse to risk. Um, maybe it is that we take different types of risk. Um, and that's the conversation that we're going to have more with Nat West, which is going to be very interesting. And I think a potential She Rebel radio roundtable at a later date. But risk is when we're exposed to danger. There is possibility of loss or injury. There is a level of uncertainty with the effects and implications of what it is that we're doing. And in a nutshell, something bad might happen. So taking Janet Jackson as an example, she lost a huge amount of her credibility within her career by taking a risque, slightly risque approach to this performance, which was a malfunction. It didn't mean to go that far. But what's really interesting is that she she got the blame. 
Um, Justin did not get the blame. Um, he wasn't asked to explain himself um, or he wasn't demonized in any way, shape or form. It was Janet that took the loss. She took the hit. Um, she, it was she that was exposed to danger with Nipplegate because it's seen as not acceptable for women to expose their nipples. And I know there's been lots of movements um, of many women saying, why is that? Um, you know, what? Why? why is that such a bad thing? But she took the hit because of the conditioning of women. Now, a, a verse, to be averse to is to dislike something, to be opposed to it, to be unwilling. But traditionally, when we're looking at being risk averse in business, it's about financially, usually, um, and also being physically, um, you know, or physiologically taking a risk. Uh, maybe not so much with business, but when we say risk averse, you know, taking physical risks um, and financial risks, that kind of more masculine patriarchal definition of it. But what about cultural risks, you know, socially, psychologically, emotionally? Because I see, and with that example of Janet Jackson, us women are taking risks with that all the time and reaping the possible loss and injury and uncertainty that that may take. Madonna is another great example um, of, you know, with throughout her career. She's still doing that now. Um, lots of people have opinions about that. But certainly in her earlier years, you know, really taking risks and, and being vilified for it. And I, getting older, really respect her. I've always been a fan, but loved her more and more for the risks that she took for us as women to break out of the box and the narrative that was created for us and not by us. So there are more and more studies that also show that successful women are more disliked um, and we are more torn down if those risks that we take go wrong. That there is the double deviance um, with my background in criminology and sociology, which is why I'm always so interested in the depth of these questions you know, there was double deviance that if women were committed of criminal offences, they were not only pu pu punished for the crime itself, but also punished for breaking the status quo of what it means to be female and to be a woman. So, you know, saying that women are more risk averse is perhaps not accurate in terms of that we, we when we're taking risks, maybe more of those socially cultural risks that we are facing potential, you know, double deviance, double punishment. And when we look at exile, I read a brilliant book called The Mermaid of the Black Conch back in the summer. I had it on one of the retreats with me, actually, and many of the women there were looking at it. And I read lots of, you know, not just personal development stuff, but, you know, female narrative um, myths that we, we've talked about on this podcast that, you know, she was exiled from the island um, and turned into a mermaid, you know, going back to nature, big being as this conversation of women being part of nature, but being exiled because she was at risk of her attractiveness to other men on the island. And we also see it with the Greek mythology of, um, in Odyssey of Circe, who is, there's different narratives, right? But she was exiled apparently by her father. And, you know, women are sent away when there may be some behaviour or risk that has been undertaken that's not accepted by the collective, by society. And that is in a nutshell really what happened to Janet Jackson. She was exiled and sent away from popular culture, from the music scene because of this, and I'm saying inverted brackets, this risky behaviour, which was actually a wardrobe malfunction that went wrong and she was vilified. Interestingly, you know, where women are exiled for risk risky behaviour. You know, we've talked about the heroine's journey and the hero's journey. The hero's journey is when men are absent from society, it's by choice, right? It's by choice that they go out and have the hero's journey and this self-discovery and they, they come back, you know, with the goods, with the lessons, whereas women are banished and exiled from society. And I was looking at when doing the research for this, the work by Palumi Basu, who has done incredible work in terms of a photographic narrative of women in Nepal who are exiled when they're menstruating. 
exiled from the family, seen as dirty when they're bleeding. I believe her project is called Blood Speaks and has had impact on the Nepalese government to make it unlawful for this menstrual exile where women are put at risk um, in the elements, in the cold, at risk of rape and all of those kind of things. Again, this exile and being sent away is really associated with with women and our narrative. And that's whether we're undertaking risky behaviour in inverted commas or things that are not accepted or whether we're just being female right? Um, And her work, Palumi Basu, I would love to have her on the podcast, just throwing that out there, that, you know, um, is is really a business of significance that's driving change and purpose. And I believe she has an exhibition in London at the moment. So I'm definitely going to try and make it up there for that. So I wanted to explore that because when we're exploring our women averse to risk, if so, why? Because the consequences are greater. And, you know, we may be averse to risk that is more traditionally male or masculine. But again, we haven't had as much access to that in terms of, you know, how can we take more financial risks when we haven't got access to the finance in the first place? That's a question that we need to ask. And what, you know, how can we celebrate women in our courage and the impact that we make when we take these cultural and socially unacceptable risks and these emotional risks when we have the consequences of potentially being banished and exiled from society because that is something that we carry as a collective and as a wound for women when we talk about risk so it's such a there's there's so many places we could go with this conversation but as always I'm just laying the scene I'm just setting the scene for us to you know ask the right questions and and dive into this but I think what we can see when we reflect back on Nipplegate that so many of us wouldn't have noticed at that time is that women are and women of ethnic groups different ethnic groups are taking risks all the time, cultural, social risks all the time, that if anything may go wrong, etc., that it will fall on them and not their male, white counterpart, etc., which, you know, so how many risks are we taking all the time that are going unnoticed, even by ourselves, let alone anybody else? So I feel like that's a really, really interesting question. And, you know, what we're going to look at is, you know, what does it what does it look like being a risk contender for you and us as a collective of women? As reflecting back on Nepal, you know, to take a risk is to not is to refuse to go to be exiled to the menstrual huts um, or to refuse on behalf of your daughter and what is the risk associated with that injury death being exiled for longer for further you know and and there's also a risk if you are exiled so you know th- there's risk on both sides that women are facing and uh, that we're not recognizing that we really are uncovering and diving more into now you know in in terms of you and where you're at um in terms of running a business your business of significance what risks might might that look like for you it could be that you um need to quit your job and go all in it could be you need to invest in more advertising marketing and we heard from Lucy Jeffrey from Bear Kind that she really threw all her money into marketing to see if it would work um, and then quit her job at the bank and you know there was a number of risks involved there it could be that you need to speak up and be visible it could be that you need to reposition yourself and your business you know um, for me in the pandemic really discovering that actually hosting one retreat a year was not enough and this limitation of not being able to do that because of lockdown etc I realized I wanted to do more retreats and I thought what an awful time to have that realization when we're in lockdown we can't even go to the pub let alone book a retreat and and host retreats but my business partner and I spoke about that and we decided we were going all in with that. We were going to book the retreats. We were going to move them if they needed to be moved. We were going to do it regardless of intermittent lockdowns and refund situations that we could face, you know, and facing hits to our own finances as running a business in a pandemic. But we we decided that we were going to take the risk and, and it was worth it. It was worth um, 
us putting that out there and giving women what they needed now more than ever. So what we're going to, in terms of laying this out here, is my journaling questions for you today. And as always, please do feel free to listen to the three episodes that we've got coming up, two on courage and impact, um, and then the last one really bringing this whole series together with Nat West. I want to kick off with your journaling questions for this episode is firstly, what risks have you undertaken in the last 12 months that you've not recognised? You know, because Janet wasn't celebrated for the risk that she was taken because we didn't even see or recognise that women are putting themselves in those positions and taking those risks. So reflecting on your journey over the last 12 months, what risks have you undertaken in this last 12 months? It doesn't need to be that they are necessarily financial ones. Then we're going to look at what risks have you been averse to and why? Maybe there are financial risks that you've been averse to or other risks being visible. Why is that? And when we hear from Mary Gregory in episode 94, which she's going to talk to us about our ego and the defence strategy that we we create as kids, as children, and how that cannot be helpful. So when we go deeper with our ego and start to unpick that, we can see how we can be keeping ourselves stuck because there might be, at a deeper level, a fear of death or exile or failure or whatever it might be. But actually, when you bring that risk up to the surface, it's not really there. So we have to have a narrative with ourselves around that. If I can support you any way with that, please always reach out to me. We have lots of these conversations at our retreats and also our healing and empowerment circles that are coming up for both solstices and equinoxes. That's a bit of a mouthful because, you know, whilst as women we can receive trauma and um, disempowerment in the collective and society, we can also find our empowerment and healing within that as well. So, and these are the kind of things that we really dive into and clear the way for. So what risks have you been averse to and why? And if you need support with going deeper with that why, then please do reach out. And thirdly, what would your favourite she rebel do? Now, I think I definitely recommend the four part documentary series with Janet Jackson. I would also recommend you watch her incredible performance at the Super Bowl with Rhythm Nation. She's talking about social justice within that. She's really a woman in her power. She's definitely become one of my, you know, well-respected She Rebels. You know, what would Janet do? So if you're facing something where you're, you know, potentially need to take a risk and there's a reluctance somewhere what what would Janet do or one of your other favorite she rebels we've talked about Lee Miller we've had Lee Lee Miller's granddaughter on she rebel radio and we have talked about Frida Kahlo with becoming your own muse you know they are two of my favorite she rebels and role models that I grew up with that you know when I'm when I'm facing something that that I need to take a risk on, that I can ask myself, what would Lee do? What would Frida do? What would Janet do? What would Madonna do? So it may be someone you know even, what would they do? And we can really get out our own way when we do that. It's been such an honour to support you for the International Women's Day series. I'm really looking forward to diving into these last three episodes. I would love to see you also at a retreat in 2022. Always reach out to me and enjoy the rest of this series. You've been listening to She Rebel Radio. It's been an honour to support you taking the time to discover more of your genius. And we thank our partners, NatWest, for supporting this series. Since the publication of The Rose Review, NatWest have been working to deliver real support for women to create their business of significance. From launching the Investing in Women Code to backing 1 billion of female entrepreneurship funding, NatWest are also educating young women through Dream Bigger, inspiring the future generations of female entrepreneurs. From their Business Builder online course to their flagship accelerator program, NatWest can support you to upskill at your own pace in a way that allows you to stay in control as you start, scale and succeed. Visit www.natwestbusinesshub.com for more. If you'd like to attend a retreat with me, visit lulumins.com and don't forget to join us in furthering the conversation on social media. Just search for NatWest Business or Lulumins in Google and on all social media platforms.